And I, I again thank everyone here in LA and my co-producer, Joanne Gaddy, who if I don't thank, she'll have my head. So, but anyway, yes, there was a question. Oh, I, I have a motorcycle, and how do I connect that to my life? Yes, that's a Good um, well, I ride it every day. It's the only vehicle I have now. Um, I got, got rid of my car. I, um, and that's one thing I just really miss. Um, how does that connect to my life as a leather? Well, I'm independent. I'm willing to be different. You know, other people are driven, uh, all the other vehicles on the road are, are different. I'm willing to take risks. Um, <clears throat> and um, and I'm able to like, yeah, keep myself together enough, sober when it's appropriate now, <laughs> and um, uh, keeping my bike in shape and all those things to, uh, uh, um, keep me safe on the motorcycle and to keep those around me safe. And that's what I really loved about the idea of, of leather motorcycle clubs being like, you need to have a bike because if you have a bike, it means that you can have the wherewithal to have a bike. You probably were able to like take care of it and, and those things. It just, um, I, I like to be, uh, um, maybe it gets back to this like self-sufficiency thing or being able to like, I can take care of my bike, I can take care of myself. And I think that's the way a lot of leather people are is they um, are able to redefine who they are, not following what's happening in the mainstream, everything. And they're able to say, I'm going to do it this way. It's different, it's a little harder, it's a little sexier, and that's awesome. Okay, so Mr. Uh, Mr. Cyan asked me about my experience with, with AIDS Life Cycle. <clears throat> That's interesting. AIDS Life Cycle is a 550-mile bike ride from uh, San Francisco to Los Angeles. It's a fundraiser uh, for the Gay and Lesbian Center in Los Angeles and the San Francisco AIDS Foundation. Um, and it gets bigger and bigger every year. And um, I think the same reason our events get bigger and bigger every year because it's community. It's got a ritual. It's got all those things. Um, my experience with it, um, I was doing my first one while running for my first leather contest. And um, so I took my old Can Harry vest on my first uh, ride because I said in my interview, if you want old Can Harry's, will you wear your vest on the ride? <laughs> and it was one of the first commitments I had to keep. Um, and is there anything specific that you were wondering about with that, or just why did I do it, or um, how did it affect me? I, um, it made me feel capable. Um, it made me realize I could get up at six o'clock in the morning on a Sunday, um, especially while I was running for the leather contest. That was hard after some Friday and Saturday nights being at events. Um, and it made me see what human beings are capable of. We create on the, on the AIDS life cycle what they call the love bubble. And it's this sense of um, when you're riding out, part of the protocols, you're, 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 you call out hazards, you know, broken glass, dead animal, whatever it is. And um, so you're constantly taking care of, your, taking care of other people on the, on the ride. And I've taken that as a personal kind of way of being even outside of it. I realized I was doing that with running people and I said, oh, look out for that. And she says, oh, thank you. I'm like, runners don't do that? I'm like, no, I guess not. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I wish I had a more clever answer, but I, I don't. You want to give her the microphone? I didn't realize I was so soft-spoken, but I just want to say how much I appreciate your honesty, especially when it's like sensitive topics, but that's what makes you a great leader or any of us that want to be leader in, in anything. We have to have those tough discussions and say exactly where we stand. 
without offending the other side. And I think that's really important in our community. But I just wanted to say thank you and that I really appreciate that. My question is, maybe I've misinterpreted you, but it seems like you feel that there should be gay men's space, gay women's space, you know, kind of separated. And you also mentioned that with the Mr. L.A. Leather contest that the contestants should be Mr. How do you feel about them putting Mr. L.A. Leather Miss L.A. Leather and L.A. Boot Black all together in the contest this weekend. Um, well, I'll talk about um, first, like, th my diversity conversation, and then I'll talk about everybody, all these things being under one banner. <clears throat> and the first thing is, um, I think we, we make a mistake of wanting rules to apply to everybody all the time. And um, that's where I came up with the pets principle. It, it, you, you live, it, th there's four different environments that you're in. You're either with your pack, your enclave, your tribe, or society. And I like to use like the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence as a great example. A sister, you know, the pack, the LA house of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence is very exclusive. You just don't show up in a nun outfit and then you're one of them. It's a whole procedure. So that's their pack. And then their enclave is the sisters like all over the world. You know? And so that's a broader thing. Now, now the different houses have different rules specific to their house, but they're all part of the same enclave and they all have some like shared identity among their enclaves. And then you move to the tribe level and for them that like includes like uh, the, the leather community and, an and, 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 and like other like edgy um, like uh, uh, fairies and stuff like that. That's all part of their like tribe. And then for society, for them, that would be, you'd call that gay pride. <laughs> gay pride is like society for that. The sisters show up, but everybody's not living under sisters' rules at gay pride. <laughs> They're living under the, pride, the, 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 the society norms of what happens at Pride. So the same thing happens with us. We need to check, where am I? If you're in this room on a, well, it used to be th on, a, on a country dance night, um, it's going to be country dance night. I have problems with this place not playing country songs. You know, Madonna is not a country artist, but they are doing it, and I have to live with that. We're like, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're mixing things up a little bit, but I like this being a country bar. And this is a country bar that's mainly for gay and lesbian people, but everybody is welcome here, and that's what this particular bar is about. But other bars can be allowed to be what they are about, and when we come together as a tribe, we are a collection. So then you have women, you should have women's spaces and men's spaces and, th but then that's different than a pan space. If, if it's a pan space, if it's a pansexual space, then it's a pansexual space. But I, uh, there's a little tyranny sometimes coming from everybody wanting everything to be pansexual. And I'm not pansexual, I'm a gay man. <laughs> so I, I wanna have my gay men's space and I want to be able to visit my cousins at the, at the PAN event. And I don't belong in a women's event. So that's how I feel about that. So then how do it, is it with, um, how do I feel about these different things? I think that um, trying to have them, I, if they're all like the, these three things at the same time, I'm fine with that, as long as they get their own time and their own dignity and what they're really, really about. I love boot blacking. Don't look at my boots tonight. These have a lot of, um, yeah. Um, but um, that's a whole thing and it should be celebrated. And when I've been to the boot blacking event um, in San Francisco and like listen to like, they get really into like all the details about how everything is done and all that, all that minutia and that's amazing. Um, and so when we try to make it boot black, Miss Leather, Mr. Leather, like all in the same night, I think that's too much. It's just, what are we gonna add next? And then it's, you know, I have a huge problem with international Mr. Leather trying to make 
um, international Mr. Boot Black um, equal to the IML contest winners. And, and this is where we, 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 we close our eyes and we stick our fingers in our ears because at the same IML event <laughs> two years ago that I went to, when they had Chuck Renslow, they were like talking, they, they had his voice saying, I, you can have the boot black contest after three years of being harassed by his boyfriend or somebody. Um, he said, fine, you can have the boot black contest, just don't inter have it interfere with IML. And at the same contest, they are being now introduced with the IML. There's no difference between the boot black people and the people competing for IML. They all are introduced together, they all come on the stage together, they all leave together, it's all one contest. And now I'm like confused. Um, you're not doing what Chuck wanted, <laughs> first. <laughs> and two, it's, it's a different thing. Why not have your own boot black contest? Yeah, that's, that, that, that's my whole thing too. And like our play spaces too, I don't think our play spaces are booked up every single weekend. If you want to have a pan event where everybody comes, regardless of how they look or how they feel or whatever, or just even if they're kinkery or not or whatever, they don't want to do all these other rules that I put on my events, um, have that event. Have it. There's plenty of time. Book the space. But people aren't doing it. What they see is the energy of the sex. I think man on man, sex energy has a specific vibration and a specific intensity and and I get it I want to be in it I want to be in it like crazy um, and but I think people want to be in that when it's not appropriate and it needs to be negotiated so that it happens in a pan space where it is and that's all I have to say okay thank Did, you everybody Okay, so um, to piggyback off, to, off of Persephone's question there, um, you had recently had a Miss Oil Can Harry um, contest here in conjunction with Mr. Correct? correct? So um, if that's how you feel about keeping things separate, then how come you had those together in one entity here for Mr. and Miss, if you can answer that. Well, you notice I didn't cause a stink about it, but I, I judged every contest up until that contest. I didn't, I didn't participate in that. That's how I dealt with it. 